Hello, hello, I'm Joe, and welcome to the video. So today is gonna be kind of a different upload. I've been getting a lot more comments lately asking me what I use to make my videos, what art supplies I use, tips for using said art supplies, yada yada yada, and I just kind of decided I would answer them in this video. <laughs> So yeah, I'm basically just going to be going through all the art supplies that I use and talking a bit about them, maybe giving some tips here and there. But I'm also going to be going through what I use to make my videos, and that's probably going to be first because I know a lot of people have been asking, and to be straight up, what I use is incredibly low budget. Like, <laughs> I, I haven't spent much on supplies or anything for my channel. So yeah, I'll be going through that. But before I just like get into that, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. So I have hit 10k subscribers. I think as of recording this, it's actually 14k, but that's besides the point. And to celebrate me hitting 10k, I'm gonna make a video where I draw you guys' your, your characters. I've already announced this on a community post, and I already have like 160 responses, I think. It's a lot, but I decided, you know, I haven't announced this in a video, so if you're interested, there's gonna be a Google form in the description of the video that you can fill out and submit your character to to have a chance for them to be drawn. But yeah, let's go ahead and dive into it anyways. So first off, people ask me what I use to record my videos, and hold on, let me go look it up real quick. Okay, so I just looked up the phone stand that I use, and I just learned that it's actually out of stock. However, there are some that you can find on Amazon for relatively cheap. If it ever comes back in stock, what I use is the Lilonzo phone desk stand. Things on Amazon have like such long names, but yeah, it's from like a store called the Lolonzo store. And I think it was like $20 when I got it. So it was pretty low budget and it works pretty, pretty dang good. I'll show a video up on screen. It has like a clamp that you're supposed to put at the base of your desk. And then the rest of it is pretty adjustable. You can like loosen the joints with uh, twists and stuff like that. And I tried looking for an alternative one to this one, and I couldn't find one that was exactly like this, but here's the one anyways. I'll put it in the description of the video. It seems it works pretty well, but uh, yeah, left my phone stand. It works pretty good. And then to actually record my videos, I use my phone. That's what I'm using right now. I use uh, an iPhone 13, I think, and it works pretty well as well. And then to edit my videos, I use CapCut which I have very mixed feelings about. It's probably the best you can find for a free phone editor. It's nothing spectacular, but it gets the job done. Then to make the thumbnails for my video, I use Procreate. I literally just use Procreate. So I have like a folder with all of the thumbnails for my videos. There's one that I changed a lot. I know there's one that I just had a lot of difficulty with. Oh my gosh, I struggled so much with this one. Could not decide what I wanted to do with it. So here's some like past, <laughs> past iterations of it. Originally I was gonna have me in the corner, but then I just decided Pav would look easier and look better. So yeah, I just settled on him. But yeah, I also do all my digital art on Procreate and I use this iPad. I don't know what kind of iPad it is, let me look. I use an iPad Pro 11 inch third generation, whatever that means, and then this Apple Pencil. But if you don't have an iPad or like a tablet or anything that you can make digital art on, you can find apps on your phone and stuff like that. Like Ibis Paint, I'm pretty sure that's on both Android and Apple and that works pretty well. But oh uh, yeah, I'm not a graphic designer or anything. I don't know how to make the perfect thumbnail. I just kind of mess around and procreate until I have something I like. Now I'm gonna get into the actual art supplies. Let's go. So first I'm gonna show off my art cart thingy. Yeah. So this right here, this is my art cart. It's where I store most of my art supplies. It's not all of them. Yeah, I just keep a bunch of random stuff that I get. Most of it is on the top shelf. And even then, the stuff on the top shelf doesn't always get used. I use my Copic markers quite frequently, which is why they're so close to my desk. So like in my chair, I'll be like sitting like this to work on my work. But then I can just swoop around, grab a marker, and swoop back. It's pretty nice. Also, look at this frog guy. 
I will keep like my brushes and just like kind of random stuff on my desk. I also have this new little shelf thing that I got at Target yesterday. I used to just store those art supplies, those two containers right there, but this looks a lot nicer. Uh, <laughs> I really like it. It was in the freaking Target $5 section. So if you want it, go check out your local Target. It's pretty good. But yeah, now that you see how I store my art supplies, I'm gonna go ahead and go through all of them. So yeah. Sorry if this video has been like all over the place. I, I don't have a script for this. I'm kind of just winging it. Actually, I guess I should go through what sketchbooks I use. So primarily I use a Canson Mixed Media XL sketchbook. We all know them, we all love them, they're pretty good. Currently, I'm using a hardcover XL sketchbook. However, I'm pretty sure they only sell the soft cover ones like this. But other than the fact that the covers are like different, I'm pretty sure the paper is almost exactly the same. Like I didn't have any problems with this sketchbook at all in terms of paper. If you're not a fan of Canson XL, I have some other recommendations. I have used my fair share of moleskin sketchbooks. I used to use moleskins quite a bit um as you can see i used a lot of mediums in them this is like acrylic this is marker this is watercolor i guess watercolor didn't work as well as the rest because the paper is pretty smooth it's not textured like uh the mixed media is but i, I feel like this works this works pretty well it's pretty good if you're looking for a good binded sketchbook can't go wrong with the moleskin you can get them at like target and stuff like that there's me using crayons in one yeah Another disclaimer before I actually get into the art supplies, I am not an expert with any art supply, ever. I just mess around with them and I hope it looks good and sometimes it does. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. So first off, y'all know I love colored pencils. I use Prismacolor colored pencils. I use the 36 count colored pencils soft core. Then my art teacher gave me this, but it's the Scholar Pack. It has 24 colored pencils. Not all of them are in there because I put some of them in here i just kind of mix them up sometimes i will say they are more on the pricier side of art supplies however you can't go wrong with them they're really the golden standard i think i made this piece with like these four colors alone maybe this blue but that's about it so they're really good <laughs> I would try to like think of an alternative colored pencil brand that's cheaper, but I don't really have one that comes to mind. For colored pencils, I use Prismacolors. I recommend them. They're pretty good. Now for markers, there's a lot more variety. So if we're talking alcohol-based markers, can't go wrong with some Copic markers. I, I do have a lot of them. So I have a good mix of Copic Chows and Copic Sketches. A lot of the Copic Sketches that I have, like the vast majority of them, I got from a Hobby Lobby sale where they were going on sale for like $2 a marker. So I just got lucky with that one. But I did get some like ch Copic Chow packs a while back and I've kind of mixed up all the colors. So this probably isn't what you get in whatever pack this was. Copic markers, as you probably already know, are on the more expensive side of markers. The, the Copic sketches go for like a base price of $8 per marker, but you can like replace the nibs and you can refill the markers. Like they have refillable ink. In fact, I have some refill ink capsules right here. So these are what the newer ones look like. They're pretty nice, pretty good. And then I have some older ones too. This is what they used to look like. It is pretty nice just being able to refill your markers though, instead of having to buy a whole new one. I think Copics are worth the investment because I've also been using these for like years. Like most of my Copic Chows I've had for like five years and I'm still using them. But if you are looking for an alternative, I use some good old fashioned Ohuhu markers. I think I got a pack of like about 48 of them and they work pretty well. They work pretty much the same as Copic markers. And I know like if you search up alcohol markers on Amazon, a bunch of results are gonna pop up. Like there are a lot of alternatives to Copic markers. I forgot to mention, Ohuhu's actually just recently started doing ink refills. So yeah, Ohuhu's are definitely becoming a better like alternative to Copics than they were before. For a cheaper alternative, I recommend Ohuhu's. They work the same as Copics, but I like Copics just a tiny bit more because I'm biased. Okay, and now I know some people like having water-based markers just to use as like backgrounds for their sketchbooks and stuff like that. And I don't normally use water-based markers like ever, but back in like 2017, I used them religiously. Like I use them in every single piece. So here's my tiny old collection of water-based markers. 
I used to use the Tombow brand. Let's see, do they even still work? These markers are like six years old. I'd be surprised. Oh, they still work. Yep. So yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty standard. I'm pretty sure people also use this for calligraphy. How do I spell my username? Oh, there's two U's. I'm so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they can also get pretty vibrant. Let's see. Yeah, that's not as vibrant as a highlighter, but it still looks pretty good. So yeah, if you like water-based markers and stuff like that, can't go wrong with a Tombow marker. So for watercolors, I use a Koi watercolor 24 color set. As you can see, it is well loved. I don't think I've used watercolors on my channel like at all, but I've been on a big watercolor kick lately and these work really good. I really like them. I'm not sure how much this set is because to be honest, I've had it since like 2019. I've had it for a long time. I kind of forgot how much it was, but, but yeah, it served me well. It's pretty good. Then for brushes, I don't even know what I use. I have a grandfather who does like really big oil paintings and so sometimes he'll buy me these really nice brushes like these. Yeah, I do like them. They're pretty good, but I don't normally do like acrylic or oil. Like I don't think I've ever touched oil paints in my entire life. But you know, I, I do use watercolor quite a bit. So I'll use a nice brush like this every now and then, but for the most part, I just like using these cheap old brushes I got freshman year. <laughs> They're falling apart, but you know, they do the job. Like here, you, listen. You can hear it rattling, it's falling apart. Let's see, this red color. Works pretty good. And then if I were to use a nicer brush like this, this already had a little bit of paint on it, but they work pretty much the same. I am a firm believer that you don't have to have good art supplies to make good art. Honestly, just go to your local Walmart, find the cheapest brushes that you can get, and just get them because they're they're going to work good. I don't think I've ever used acrylics or anything on my channel, but Liquitex is pretty good. In the past year, I have attempted to do two big acrylic paintings. For both of them, I used Liquitex. They're on the nicer side of art supplies as well, but I also like to use these, Americana, Deco Art, whatever. Honestly, I stole almost all of my paints from my mother because she paints a lot. So I think she gets these at Michael's. If I had to guess, you can probably get all of this at like Hobby Lobby, Michael's, stuff like that. I know Walmart sells like Apple Barrel acrylic paints that are very similar to these and I've used them before. They're not bad. This is just what I use. Um, and I, I don't even use them that often. <laughs> And then I don't really know like what to classify these as, but I use Posca markers to like fill up space in my sketchbooks. They're pretty, pretty good. However, they will kind of tear up the page if you like layer them on top of each other. Yeah, Posca pens are pretty good. They're pretty fun to play with. I have a pack of about 30 or 40 of them, I think. If you feel like you just need something that you can use to fill up space in your sketchbook and you don't want to put any effort into it, just get some Posca pens. They're a lot of fun to play around with. I recommend them. And finally, last but not least, whatever this stuff is. People always ask me what I use for my line art. And primarily, I use a Tombow Fudanosuke pen and they work so good. So the pack I got was a two pack off of Amazon and they're both brush tip kind of, but this one is like harder. And then this one is softer. I usually use the hard tipped one just because, I don't know, I'm, I'm too scared to use this, but I've really only used these with Copic markers and they work really well with Copics, but with other water-based materials, I don't, I don't really know. But yeah, I really recommend them. They're really good. Microns are really good too. They're pretty well known. Usually I don't use Microns with like my finished artwork. I usually use the Fudanosuke pens, but Microns work pretty well too. They're pretty good. And they have a large variety of colors that you can choose. And then for sketching, I use a BIC 0.7 millimeter lead HB number two, whatever. 
yeah, just a normal mechanical pencil, pretty much. You can get these at like your local Target or Walmart. As for erasing, I use both a kneaded eraser and a polymer eraser, and these go hand in hand with each other. I do not use one without the other, because though polymer erasers are really good at just erasing stuff on its own, if you rub this on the piece of paper and then you use this to erase it, it's like it was never there. Like, it's- it works wonders for me. I love them. Also, whenever I have a sketch and I'm about to do the line art with traditional art, what I like to do, and what y'all have probably seen me do in the video, is I like to just rub this kneaded eraser on top, and then that lightens it. So that helps me see the line art a lot better. And then here's just a few random things that I use in my sketchbook every now and then. So I use washi tape. I got most of these from my friend who got them off of shop Temu, I think. Timu? I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, I just kind of use them for fun. I use them to tape things down in my sketchbook. It's pretty cute. I recommend having some washi tape on hand at all times. Then I will glue stuff down in my sketchbooks every now and then. And I just use this Scotch permanent glue stick. I've never really had a problem with it. It works fine. It gets the job done. And honestly, I think that should be it. If you're interested in supporting me elsewhere and you like the art that you saw in my sketchbooks, then go check out my other sketchbook tours and my sketchbook sessions, first of all, because they're pretty good. I have a Pinterest that I post art pretty frequently on, and then I have an Instagram that I've done absolutely nothing with, but it's it's there. I plan on using it soon. It just kind of scares me, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, yeah, that should be it for the video. I hope y'all learned some things and y'all got your questions answered. I'll see y'all in the next video, which will hopefully be a lot higher quality than this. Bye. <laughs>